We can make some guesses. The closest comparison could be a down clock. I think in this game, we're gonna have to say there's an advantage for the PS5 Pro. It is. Então quer dizer que o PS5 Pro tem uma vantagem em cima da 700 XT. Quando é que vocês vão pedir desculpa? Conheça a RB Store. No tocante a essa questão aí de PC Gamer, é o melhor lugar para acompanhar promoções e conferir preços, tá ok? Acesse esse site que vai te ajudar a fugir da taxinha do amor. Aqui a PS Pro Killer. Vamos ver o PS Pro Killer. It took us over three years to build a $500 PC that could beat the PlayStation 5. And even then there were some compromises. And now we're conspiring to murder the PS5 Pro in less than a week? <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, that $200 price bump that everyone is angry about frees up a lot of money for our budget. Except for <clears throat> one small problem, David. While $200 is certainly a lot of money, it doesn't buy that much these days. And while we could have taken the easy path and just thrown a better GPU into our original killer. Pô, eu lembro que em, quando saiu o PlayStation 4, adrenaline, um monte de gente fez vídeo na época, assim, falando do como montar um computador melhor que o PlayStation 4. Aí eu, porra, beleza, mas roda o God of War. This is LTT. We don't play on easy mode. When we're done, we're gonna have upgraded graphics. Oi, roda, 10 anos depois. More features, a case that doesn't look straight out of the Fallout universe, and the same or better performance than the PS5 Pro. But be warned, this ain't gonna be a smooth ride. Unfair advantage to Team PC. But, as you would expect from any coverage of this topic, the angry comments came from the other side too, with many of you accusing us of favoring Team Console. Linus, you said, you didn't place enough value on the extra flexibility of the PC, on the free online play, or the cheaper, larger game library. But guys, look, not every video can be about every topic. And today, our goal is straightforward. We are going to beat the PS5 Pro in visual fidelity and frame rate at the same price. We are still going to allow secondhand parts because, yes, Mark, we do need shortcuts to beat your wonderful machine, but we are going to uncut as many other corners as possible, which means getting the absolute most out of every penny we spend, starting with our CPU, the Intel Core i5-12400F. And I can already hear you saying, Linus, Intel for gaming? And yeah, to be clear, the AMD 5600X would have been our ideal pick. And if they were priced identically, we would have gone team red, just like Sony did for the PS5 Pro. But when we can save about $30 and still get a better CPU than what's in $50, and still get a better CPU than what's in any version of Sony's white monolith, it's kind of a no-brainer. Once again, we aren't going with the exact specs of the machine we're competing against. We've actually got two fewer processing cores, but... Ué, mas não aumentou o clock do PlayStation 5 Pro, né? 3.8. ...powerful than Sony's, meaning that in gaming, we should come out ahead. And the included cooler, that's a nice little bonus for additional savings. The leap over to Team Blue comes with other benefits as well. Now that the LGA 1700 platform has been out for a few years, there are some cheap motherboards out there, like this ASRock B660M HDV that we found for under $40. Now you don't need to go for this one in particular. In fact, if it wasn't for the outstanding deal we got, we would have preferred something with a couple of Gen 4 NVMe slots and built-in Wi-Fi. But going used means you need to be flexible and snag whatever works and is cheap. But hey, at least being B660, it does support higher speed XMP memory kits. Like this one, this, our 16 gig kit of G-Skill Ripjaws 5. Now it's worth noting that be uh, 19 because of our CPU choice, we could have gone with DDR5 and a DDR5 motherboard, but this kit was just 20 bucks. And Olha isso, cara, 16 giga por 20 dólares. Especially now that we need to match the PS5 Pro's two terabytes of storage. And we did. Or at least we were supposed to. This is one terabyte. It was marked in inventory as two terabytes. We're still counting the price of a two terabyte one against our total. I see. Okay. Now, 
You probably noticed, this is a pretty decent looking SSD. Last time around, we didn't have a high-end SSD, and we justified our choice by pointing out that it doesn't really have an impact on real-world gaming performance. But this time, we're challenging ourselves to do better, and we found something that meets Sony's minimum recommended requirements for a secondary drive. And we went with the WD Black SN850X, which we found for a little under $75, and which happens to be Tom's hardware's pick for best PS5 SSD. Though it should be noted that... Tipo assim, os preços lá nos Estados Unidos, sem ser usado, tá bem caro também. At very reasonable prices. Ah, you smell that? That's the smell of a right angle. Get it? Because we didn't cut the corner anymore? Uh... Anyway, for our case. We chose this perfectly decent mid-size NZXT H510 that we found for $30 on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, Eagle Eyes, it's not the exact same one, but come on, what's the point of us buying that black one that someone else could use when we have this white one sitting in our warehouse? And besides, the point is not the exact case. There are a ton of options out there around this price point, including some much more fun ones if you don't mind rolling the dice. We also found some older model cases that have support for an optical drive if that's your thing, but we won't need one this time around because uh, the PS5 Pro doesn't have one either. Thanks for the free right angle, comrades of Ken Kutaragi. When it comes to raw power, there are any number of power supplies que eu comprei aqui. that could do the job. But we didn't want a shoddy heartbeat for our Sony Slayer here. So after looking through a number of reputable units at the right price, we settled on this Corsair CX750 for $35. 750 watts? Yeah, that sounds kind of overkill considering that the PS5 Pro draws less than half of that. But <clears throat> we're gonna need it to power a GPU that can beat the Pro. Which I guess brings us perfectly to the star of any good gaming PC and also the star of the PS5 Pro, if you consider that the GPU changes are the only ones that really impact performance. Sony made a big deal out of the big three. Larger GPU with 45% better raw performance, more advanced ray tracing hardware, and a new AI-driven upscaling that they call PSSR. Ever since the announcement, I've been very eager to get my hands on this bad boy to see what kind of PC card that's gonna translate to in the real world. We can make some guesses. The closest comparison could be a downclock. Fala mais nada para vocês, cara. Ó. 7800 XT, but the not yet seen ray tracing hardware and custom better than FSR but not quite DLSS upscaling makes us wonder if we're going to need to wait for AMD's 8000 series for a ah, meu Deus. Ah, porra. true equivalent. One way to avoid giving up features would be to go for an NVIDIA RTX 4070, because as digital... Lê um primeiro comentário. Ó. Escrevemos incorretamente que o processador próprio possui uma arquitetura RDNA 2, quando na verdade ele possui uma unidade de computação RDNA 3. Ah, tá. Vou até postar isso aqui no Twitter. Postar aqui rapidinho que vocês ficam me odiando lá. We're going to need to wait for AMD's 8000 series for a true equivalent. One way to avoid giving up features would be to go for an NVIDIA RTX 4070 because, as Digital Foundry pointed out, its feature set more closely matches the new console. Ah lá, a Digital Foundry falou que é perto da 4070, porra. When it came to decision time, we felt that this XFX Quick 7800 XT with its higher raw performance would make up for the lack of shiny features and help us secure another win for Team PC. What are we looking at for our total? Six dollars, cara. Olha, e mesmo assim, olha só como é que as coisas estão. Mesmo ele comprando as paradas segunda mão, olha o preço que deu no final, né? Não tem como você falar que o console tá caro. Aí tá no preço. Igual eu falei desde o início. É o preço. É, falta o controle. Falta o Wi-Fi já tem, né? Ficou faltando só o controle, na verdade, né? $655. Wait, really? 
That leaves enough for a sketchy Windows key, that 8-bit dope uh -huh. we checked out recently, and even some stick lock from LTTstore.com to cover those precious analog nubbins during transport. So it seems that they... But uh, I couldn't help noticing there's still no Wi-Fi 7. Hmm, okay, well, that's a bit of a corner, isn't it? But, but, hold on. If you don't have any Wi-Fi 7, here in Brazil, it doesn't matter nothing Wi-Fi 7. this machine using the absolute lowest prices we found, Scrapyard War style, maybe we could get it at a lower price? $535. Not bad. That's a potential $165 of budget to play with for a Wi-Fi card and, I don't know, uh, other stuff. What would you use the money for, Linus? That's a tough question, because you're not going to go up another class of GPU, and you could upgrade your CPU, but that's probably not going to affect gaming performance that much. I think the best use of it, this is a pretty well-rounded system. Probably just go for some games. Speaking of, let's do a side-by-side. How close are we here? I definitely am seeing some weird moire in my rug. Me as well. But oh, you are too. Yeah. Right now I've set our PC to the PS5's ray trace performance mode, which is the ideal way to play on PS5 base, but we probably want to mess with the settings a little bit to get a little more visual fidelity and see what we can squeeze out. Um, question for you, where's, the, oh yeah, no, we're still getting some pop in from the confetti. It looks about the same on both of them. Honestly, when we did the short circuit on the PS5 Pro, I didn't find that the PS5... Um, question for you, where's the... Oh yeah, no, we're still getting some pop in from the confetti. It looks about the same on both of them. Honestly, when we did the short circuit on the PS5 Pro, I didn't find that the PS5 and the Pro looked that different in this game. And I'm having a hard time picking anything... Oh, the grass! Your grass is Ooh. noticeably higher fidelity than mine. Yeah. Okay, if I want to catch up, I'm gonna have to... I don't know if I like you... Oh yeah. Olha o upscaling aí que vocês falaram que é uma merda. Noticeably higher fidelity than mine. Yeah. Okay. If I want to catch up, I'm gonna have to change that. Nothing here looks like it's gonna help with that. All I can really do is... I, I mean... think it's just resolution. Ah, tá. Ele vai botar tudo no máximo. Yeah, okay. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Interesting. Does it look closer to yours right now? Yeah, Because we looked at... No, I, sw I swear, when we were looking yeah, at it before, worse. it was... Hold on. Okay, I'm going back. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Now it's poo-poo again. That's so interesting. It's so blurry. What do I have to change to make it operate like it does in the menu? Look at this. Am I supposed to be able to see what I'm changing? No, definitely Sorry. not. We're definitely getting 1% lows below 60. Ray tracing is on, which is definitely not the 7800 XT's, you know, forte. But that's the trade-off. I think in this game, we're going to have to say there's an advantage for the PS5 Pro. It is. Então quer dizer que o PS5 Pro tem uma vantagem em cima da 7800 XT. Quando é que vocês vão pedir desculpa? Cadê o calcinha? Tá aí, calcinha? Oi, já tá se escondendo, calcinha? Cadê você? Quero ver você. Agora que o Lion nos falou é verdade, né? Quando o trouxa do Baltar fala, é só um idiota brasileiro. Macaco falando, né? An exceptionally well optimized game, even on the base PS5. So the PS5 Pro just gets that extra little bit. However, with that said, if you had me blind taste test these, I would not object to either of them. This is a great experience if you want to play Rift Apart. I watched something that I've been curious to see for myself, and I would be able to tell the difference with PSSR for one big issue, which is some of its upscaling looks like it's moving. If you look at those lines in the deck, you can see them kind of like moving, and they're not supposed to be. Like, they're supposed to be stationary. Oh, okay, so hold on a second. See? Yours are just oh. stationary. So there's motion artifacting or something. I saw it in a Digital Foundry video, and I've been curious to see that. So we've got some advantages and disadvantages both ways. Yes. I'm just looking at the confetti in there. Inside, yeah. I think mine is just going to crap. FSR has no idea what to do with it. <laughs> it's pretty bonkers. There's yeah. a lot of motion artifacts in yeah. it. And it's clear that the PS5 Pro's upscaling is doing a much better job here. Like, it's really hard, but if you can catch one with your eye and try to follow it around, you can follow a piece of confetti around yours. Mine? Good luck. Yeah. That's just a garbled mess. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Overall, the motion is still there. It's moving clockwise or whatever. Yeah. But those are individual objects, and that's just, it's shredded, almost, <laughs> looking. My foliage doesn't look way worse than yours here, though. Oh, my trees do, though. That was background? Yeah, the yeah. background trees look so flat Should we change the settings? I think this is an L. 
I think the PS5 Pro might take the win on this one. I have everything set to high, but I think we're going to want to mess with the settings again. I think your menu looks better, though. Like, substantially. Oh. Oh. Would you like to enable the pro rendering mode? Here we go. Yes. Yeah. We reset these displays right before we started. And when we were using them for PS5 versus PS5 Pro on short circuit, they looked the same. I thought Windows 11 each share was supposed to be good. Uh. <laughs> Just said you liked mine better. That's true. Hey, did I load first? I think you might have loaded faster than the PS5. Got a little one into that. Oh, just Dang kidding. It. <laughs> Tune the two. Caraca, ainda carregou primeiro. Ainda carregou primeiro que o Super PC. Wow, that's remarkably close. I feel like your hair is better, but maybe just Thanks. at an angle. Uh huh. It's true. I think your textures are worse. That's pretty. If they are, it's not by much, dude. I think, like, the photos are a little bit clearer here. I don't know if that's a PSSR oh. thing. Because it looks like it's doing some weird work on their oh, shirts. Oh, yeah. Dude, I would rather have the softer photo than the, like, shimmery line on it. It's distracting. Are you getting a good, solid 60 FPS? Oh, yeah. This is very 60 FPS-y. Me too. Looks like your 1% lows are a little bit lower, but I wouldn't be able to tell. Not with any kind of variable refresh rate. The fact that we can be this close to the screen and not tell the difference, I think, tells the story. Yeah. They both look great. They both look fantastic. I think we could call this a close enough. Yeah. I think we could probably tweak settings and get it a little bit better, but you're already at your performance threshold, so. Yeah, I think this is as good as it's going to get. Uh, wow. This is not good. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're 40-ish. I'm not even, no, I don't even think I believe what FrameView is saying. <laughs> Dude. Touch this. Oh yeah, that's like sub 30. No way, that's way. This is bad. The, the, the pacing here is terrible. Turn off your ray tracing. You know what, I'm gonna turn VSync off and see if that helps. Yeah, that helps a lot. Okay. Okay, now it feels like what it says it is. The thing about VSync is if you dip below the target frame rate, in many cases, it will actually have to dip even lower in order to ensure smooth delivery of frames. And if you are oscillating between them, it can feel extremely stuttery, worse than if you just didn't have it at all. And in this case, this was clearly the right play. I'm getting a little bit of tearing, but this is way smoother. It doesn't look as smooth as yours, though. Once again, your HDR pops so much more than mine. And for those of you looking at frame view up here and doubting that HDR is working, my menu pops. Like HDR is definitely on on both of these displays. It says HDR mode right here, Asus Gaming HDR. Trust me, we reset them right before we started. We did learn when we did the last PS5 killer that Intel's implementation of HDR just plain didn't work because there's a lot of proprietary nonsense that both AMD and Nvidia have baked into their drivers to get the bloody thing working. So we could be seeing some of that here. It could also be that Windows HDR just plain isn't that great. I'm curious, can, can I come stand on that semicircle? You I want to look at the background because I'm getting a lot of that motion upscaling crap in the background. No, the PC is a lot more stable. No, nope, mine's clean. But I think you need to turn down some settings to get to 60. Yeah. OK. <clears throat> I don't like PSSR. I think it looks bad. Like, look at this tree. Am I crazy? Is that, like, that's... No, you're not crazy. That's a lot worse than mine. Have a look. I expected uh, this to be better yeah. than FSR. And I think, you know... Well, it is better than FSR. But it's not better than just if you aren't using as much FSR. That's fair. I have a more powerful GPU than you. Yes. However, it's pretty clear that I'm not getting an even 60 FPS and honestly, all things considered, I'd probably take that gaming experience. Really, hey? I mean, here, try it. Let's try it. Swapsies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. And I'm not looking at this going, wow, what a huge difference in visual fidelity. When I'm actually playing the game, if I'm not sitting in pixel peeping. No, these are both more than adequate. I would be fine with either of these. I think I would be prepared without changing one setting at a time and rebooting the whole game, I think I'd be prepared to call this one pretty much a tie. Yeah? It's not quite there. I don't think we're quite there. 
but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Let's close this out by answering some questions. Is the PS5 Pro as bad a value as people are making it out to be? I, uh, 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 uh. Well, I think that depends who you are. If you have a 1080p display, absolutely do not buy this machine. If you have a 4K display though, and a base PS5, you could get anywhere from 250 to even more for your current machine, meaning the upgrade's gonna cost you 350 to $450. That is a pretty tough sell. The PS5 Pro definitely looks better, but from TV distance, I feel like only the discerningest of gamers. Isso daí que eu falei. Se você é um cara que joga longe da televisão, talvez você nem veja a diferença, cara. Ah, eu falei isso no vídeo de ontem. Eu posso pegar o Pro out of a lineup. Com isso said, if you're coming into the PlayStation 5 ecosystem fresh, it's undoubtedly the better machine. It's the definitive PlayStation 5 experience. And for $250 more, it's no worse of a deal, as we just showed, than spending another 250 bucks on a gaming PC for better fidelity, because I don't really think that our extra couple hundred bucks blew away what Sony was able to do with the extra budget. I wouldn't judge you then for going for the PS5 Pro, but just be aware that you'll have to factor in an external disk drive if you want to get the best deals on games. As we showed recently, it's definitely worth the investment if you buy more than a small handful of games each generation. The other big question is PS5 Pro versus our PS5 Pro killer PC. Well, if you're the buy everything new sort, this machine is going to run you around $900 before tax. Ah, e se for comprar tudo novo? E aí? Só tô esperando só as desculpas, só, só isso. Só tô esperando a desculpa. 900 reais para dólar americano. Ué, quando eu montei o PC, igual, deu acho que 800 dólares quando o console foi anunciado. Desrespeitoso é o cara lá do Canadá fazer o L pra gente ter que pagar 4 mil de imposto aqui. Isso que é desrespeitoso. Might make up that difference in cheaper games and extra utility. But not everybody has a couple hundred extra dollars up front, which means that the choice is not exactly clear. As for our secondhand machine, well, I think there's a ton of value here. I love this machine, I love this configuration, and I would strongly recommend scrapyard warring yourself a kick-ass gaming rig like this. But before Mark Cerny calls me out in another interview, I fully acknowledge that, yeah, we killed the PS5 Pro, but we also threw sand in its eyes before the fight even started, so, uh... Pocket Sponsor! Yeah! Acabou. Cara, é aquela porra, né, cara? A experiência do Play 5 Pro é uma experiência que você não reclama. Não, eu vou jogar aqui o Final Fantasy, tá bom. Vou jogar o... qualquer outro jogo ali. Até, por exemplo, eu testei até o Plague Tale Requiem. Ele não tem update, mas ele fica em 60 quadros o tempo inteiro. É uma experiência muito boa, cara. Entre o PS5 Pro e o cara montar um PC só para jogo, é tipo assim, a consciência do cara. Ah, eu gosto mais do PC ou eu não gosto do PC. Ok. O grande problema é que, porra, é um abuso você pagar 4 mil de imposto, cara. É um abuso. Esse é o problema. Dito isso, o PC. Mas no PC você também paga imposto, cara. Dero, não adianta. É melhor comprar o um PC. Balança. Acabou de ver o vídeo. Não é possível que você não viu o mesmo vídeo que eu. Você pode comprar o um PC, pô. Não tem problema, mas... Vai ser o que ele falou ali, filho. O Ferro Velho Edition. Tu não vai ter um mouse maneiro. Tu não vai ter um teclado maneiro. Vai ter que usar Linux. Ou então o crack. 